Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I have uh, 11 movie reviews for you today. Uh, some really good, some not so good, some one-time watches. And yeah, so let's just dive right on in. Um, first one here is a film from 2003, put out by Red Rum Entertainment. That is a film called uh, Hunting Humans. Uh, this is about, um, I guess two serial killers in the same city um, trying to beat each other at their own game. Um, this is directed by Kevin Kangas and it stars Rick Gans, Bubby Lewis, uh, Lisa Michelle, and some guy named Trent. Uh, he didn't have a last name apparently. I thought that was a little strange. Um, it, it was an okay movie. I, I don't see myself keeping it. It was it was just a good one time watch. You see on the back here the guy with the claw and a, a meat cleaver. Um, yeah, it was very low budget. Um, it's not something I would watch again, but it was okay. Good for a one time watch. Uh, you do get a bunch of special features on this DVD. You get a making of featurette. Audio commentary with the uh, director and the uh, star of the film, Rick Gans. He also produced the movie. Um, outtakes and photo gallery and whatnot. So not the not the greatest not the greatest movie in the world, but I got this. I think I found this at an FYE a couple years back, uh, used. So yeah, it's it's okay. Uh, this one I actually had fun with. This was um, this is a Warner Archive title from 1980. This is 86. Was actually 85 when I saw the the, the credits at the end of the film. Uh, this stars Jennifer Connelly, uh, Byron Thames, Maddie K Corman, and Billy Worth. That is a film called Seven Minutes in Heaven. It's like a coming of age type movie. Not necessarily like one of the big ones, like you know, Breakfast Club and, and stuff like that in the mid '80s. Uh, but you know, it was it was good. I definitely want to keep this in my collection, uh, especially Jennifer Connelly. This was like this wasn't her first film. I think it was her first like one of her first like lead roles. Obviously, Phenomenon. That was also one of her first lead roles. Um. I think her first filmography was, I think, Once Upon a Time in America. Um, anyway, um, yeah, basically, uh, they're, these three kids are all 15 years old. They're having problems at home with their parents, uh, especially, especially this guy right here. Uh, she's got her own issues, and she has issues with her dad. Her mom passed away. Her dad's never home, and, you know... She was supposed to go to her, I guess, grandparents' house, but she wanted to stay home. She was old enough to take care of the house by herself when her dad was away. Things happen when he's gone, a lot of drama, and he comes home and because he's he's had a, his a he has a bad relationship with his uh, stepfather, and wants him to do like so many things. He doesn't really want to do what his dad, his stepdad, wants him to do because that's what his stepdad wants him to do is his dream not his and what have you but and then this girl right here she has like a she wants to go with this baseball player and she has she makes up with him in his car for seven minutes and then he she you know sends a mail and then he mails her back but it's like they they never had a relationship it was just him treating her like a friend and what have you so pretty interesting film i i really highly recommend this film if you guys check it out uh this one though oof, this one was very strange uh i'm going to keep this one in my collection though uh we have a shutter original here i think it was from 2020 uh called fried berry a lot going on in this film uh apparently this this guy he's uh, he's a drug addict. He's he's living in I think I don't know what, what country this is from, but it's not it's not U.S. But anyway, 
He's living at home with his wife and kid. The kid doesn't think the kid's his and what have you. And then apparently he gets abducted by aliens and they warp his, they take over his whole body. And he, uh, he's going through this like weird journey or whatever. It's it's just so strange. But I I thought it was, thought it was good uh, overall. But yeah, a lot of drug use in here. A lot of like sex and you know, it's just really weird. But directed by Ryan Kruger. 99 minutes put out by R.O.J.E. and Shudder. Uh, yeah, no, no interior artwork on that. Uh, next one here, I, I didn't honestly didn't care for at all, so I'm gonna get rid of this one. Um, this is Audition Tape 13. This is put out by Black Neon and Bounty Films. Uh, I'm not sure. I think this is all, yes, I think this is an Australian film, if I'm not mistaken. I think I believe I looked it up. It was Australian. Really good premise here. You get a uh, independent film director casting for his new movie. Uh, he, he he encounters an actress who uh, I guess she has beef with him or something. I don't really remember. It's the, this movie is not memorable at all, but. Uh, she's wanting to turn the tables on him and she ends up like kidnapping him and the producer and torturing them and what have you it's it's I wanted to like this film more than than I did I thought it was not great some scenes were decent but overall I, I didn't I didn't care for this film but you get uh, commentary with the cast and crew alternate opening interviews bloopers a music video and the trailer on here so i got it on e on amazon for like i don't know i think it was like four dollars five bucks something like that so i don't feel bad for spending money on that one uh next one here is a uh olive films release from 1995 starring alicia silverstone and that is the babysitter um this movie is uh, something else. This is a uh, Joel Schumacher produced film directed by Guy Furland. Uh, what can I say? Uh, it's got a good cast. It's got uh, obviously Alicia. It's got Jeremy London, George Siegel, uh, J.T. Walsh. Uh, basically... It's about the girl next door. She's a babysitter uh, and everybody wants to get with her. There's a lot of like sexual fantasies in here from different men. Uh, her boyfriend is Jeremy London or their ex-boyfriend, I should say, because they're not together. They were together previously. Uh, this movie was okay. I, I thought the, uh, you know, over-sexualization of her was just, you know, yeah, it's kind of some of it was kind of cringy, but you know, to me, to, to personally to me, but to others people probably some people yes, some people no. Um, I don't know if I'll watch this again, but I'm gonna keep it for now. But I might not make the cut later down the line. So the babysitter. Uh, a couple of vinegar syndrome titles that I will be keeping in my collection. Uh, for the next one here is Witch Story, a.k.a. Um, Superstition 2. It really has nothing to do with the first film, other than the fact that they're both related because you know, of witches. Um, yeah, this movie was pretty, pretty crazy. Um, it is a 4K release. You get the 4K and the Blu-ray. I did reverse the artwork because I think the under... The artwork underneath was was that. So this is the artwork I put up here. Um, that's like, this is like the beginning of the film, so you don't really see a whole lot of that. But anyway, um, so if I remember correctly, um, uh, the this brother and sister are going down to I believe it's Florida after their parents passed away. And they're staying at this old house that's um, it's haunted by this 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 uh, witch and this kid. They were both dead because they got burned by the townspeople years back. 
um yeah it, it was it was pretty good i i need to rewatch it again but i think it's sub the superstition the first film is better than this in my opinion but it was it was a decent quote-unquote follow-up to it i guess but uh you do get um let's see here on both discs you get the film presented in hdr and uh, the Blu-ray has special features. It has directing a witch story, interview with the director, interview with the producer, interview with the cinematographer, video essay by Mike Foster, uh, inter a making of documentary uh, with interviews with the director, cinematographer, and composer, raw audition footage, and image gallery. You know. I enjoyed it overall. Again, I gotta go back and rewatch it because I was kind of half asleep when I was watching it the other night. But let me let me know if you guys enjoyed Witch Story. Uh, next one here is um, it was a rewatch because I think I ended up falling asleep the first time I watched it when it was first originally released. Um, we got Spookies here. Um, this movie was weird, like very, very strange. Um, this takes place in the uh, New England area. People are traveling, their car breaks down, they end up taking shelter at this old mansion, which is, it's not haunted, but it's definitely not, uh, not abandoned, that's for sure. You get these uh these monsters and ghouls living there and they're trying to like take over their they kill them and take over their bodies and what have you but it was uh it was interesting there's definitely a lot of black magic in this film i think this movie had like yeah three different directors so you, you can see you can tell that 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 all three of them had different um, ideas for this film. It was just all over the place, but it was cheesy. It was it was fun. I enjoyed it though. So, 1985, 85 minutes, directed by Thomas Duran, Brendan Faulkner, and U U Eugenie Joseph. Uh, loads of special features. You get uh, a feature length making of documentary feature length documentary on the uk home video label called vipco uh 2015 alamo draft house screening with the with thomas duran and frank farrell q a from the hudson horror show from 2015 with uh two actors and a production assistant uh archival location featurette Outtakes and bloopers, behind the scenes, still a gallery. So, pretty cool addition for that. Uh, next one is one that I was I, I wanted to like, but I ended up not liking it at all, to be honest. This is a uh, 2007 film put out by 165 Films and Blade Walker Films. Uh, that is The Fun Park. I, I enjoy uh, horror films that take place in um, amusement parks and carnivals and what have you, but this movie, uh, I, I wish I could have liked it more than I did. Um, basically, it's about uh, this clown, uh, takes place in Oklahoma, this clown called Bobo, as you can see here. Uh, he was bludgeoned to death uh, at, while locking up for the night at Family Fan, Fum, Family Fan Park in, I think it was like 1987? Yeah, because it's from 2007, so. Um, uh, the park closed after that, but they committed, remained abandoned for a while, and then these kids wanted to go there because they were there, they went there when they were kids. Or probably they're sitting in their 30s now or something like that uh actually no hang on that's it's kind of okay it's kind of weird that they say that because it says nearly 30 years ago the clown was bludgeoned to death 
which says in the summer of 2006, a group of high school graduates from Wilson Creek set off to disprove the legend of Bobo the Clown and the Haunted Fun Park. But it is haunted. Well, I don't know if they were ghosts because they were pretty real to me. But then again, there's only... Well, I don't want to spoil it for you, but... <sighs> The kids go there, they mess around, and they find out real fast that that they are there. But toward the end of the film, when the cops go to see that if anyone's there, no one's there. So they could have been ghosts. I don't know. But anyway, this movie was not great. The acting was pretty bad. Uh, the, the kills were okay. I thought they were okay. But overall, I, I don't see myself really watching that. <laughs> Uh, then we got the last three here. We have, uh, finally checked out this film put out by, I think it was A and, A and P. Yeah, A and P Productions. Really good, uh, really good company out there. Um, we have Murder Size. Uh, the dead deadliest aerobics video ever made. So, it's about these group of girls and then this, these this one dude he's trying to trying to make a video for his it's, it's it's like an aerobics gym it's not an actual gym gym but it's an aerobics gym and all the complications they have and uh yeah it's it's really weird so i trying to remember exactly the whole details of this film all right in the beginning of the film there's these two this ladies like uh, being like uh, these two two men are trying to break into this this lady's house so she calls the cops and the uh, <clears throat> cops arrive real fast but they're not cops they're killers just disguised as cops they're going around town killing people for whatever reason i don't remember what, the, what they're what they why they do it why they're doing it their motive or whatever and then it goes to fast forward to the gym and uh a lot of these girls here are really ditzy really like not <laughs> it's annoying to me personally but um and then enter uh kansas bowling's character she's right there her name's phoebe in the film uh she did really 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 well in this film i i am a fan of kansas bowling um i've seen her in a few other films over the years um she wants everyone to stop being perverts and just be there to exercise and make the damn video and get on with it but um some of the other girls just want to show off their bodies and hook up with guys and stuff and it's just really like okay kind of like yeah so but i enjoyed this one um uh, you get a really cool like um I want to say I don't want to say it's a cameo because he's in here for quite a long time. Uh, Drew Drew uh, Marvick, uh, Pool Party Massacre, and quite a few other things I've seen over the years. Uh, I that's a cool dude. Uh, then you got uh, Jessa Flux in here. Her character is really annoying, but she put she she did pull it off pretty well. So uh, I recommend it if you guys like cheesy horror films, kind of like Death Spa and. Like, uh, what's the other one called? Sorry, I have it behind me. Um, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember which I'm, which one I'm thinking of right now, but uh, you'd probably enjoy that one. Uh, this one, this one's like a guilty pleasure uh, from my childhood. Uh, stars everyone's favorite brother, uh, Hulk Hogan, Christopher Lloyd, and Shelley Duvall. Uh, and that is Suburban Commando. <laughs> Uh, when can we get this on Blu-ray, guys? I mean, come on. Uh, new line, so Warner Brothers, make it happen. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> um, this movie was crazy. 1991, directed by Burt Kennedy. Um, it's kind of weird that it only shows the one kid on the cover because they actually have two kids, but the daughter's not really in the film all that much. Uh, the son's more in here than the than the daughter is, but um, so you get Christopher Lloyd. He is what is he again? He is a he's 
forget what his job is, but he's like an assistant to this, uh, to, uh, what's his name? Uh, Larry Miller's character. I think they're trying to sell stuff to the, uh, Japanese, uh, trying, they're trying to get a deal going with them. And Larry Miller's character is just a jackass and he's pushing all the, all the workload on Christopher Lloyd's character. So he's going through a lot of tough times with that. Uh, his his wife Shelley Duvall, um, obviously she's she's great in this, uh, playing her quirky character as always. And they have two kids. Uh, I don't remember their name. There, I don't remember their names. I don't remember the. I don't remember the, the name. The I think yeah, the one kid. I'm not sure if it's him or not, but uh, David Faustino's brother is in this. I don't think it's that kid. I think it's another one of his friends in the film. But anyway, um, so you have the you have Hulk Hogan. He is a um, <clears throat> he is a galactic warrior temporarily stranded on Earth. He's dealing with bounty hunters trying to come get him, and he's bringing aliens to Earth, and he's he needs help to save the world from Christopher Lloyd. And, uh, yeah, this movie is all over, this movie is bonkers, it's all over the place, but I, I thought it was fun. Uh, as far as special features go on here, you really don't have a whole lot. But you do have that DVD-ROM content, which, you know, people loved doing back in the early 2000s. You get, a uh, uh, Pick That Flick game, which I, I didn't bother looking up into that, but that's cool nonetheless. Um, but yeah, Hulk Hogan. Is he is he a good actor? I thought he did well in this movie. I haven't really. I need to watch like Mr. Nanny and is there is there other, are there other ones I'm forgetting right now. Let me know down below. Uh, then the last one here is a '70s film which I didn't particularly care for. Uh, there's a lot going on in this film. It's 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 all right. I'm telling you, it's called A Name for Evil. It's promoted as a horror movie, but it's really more of like a crime, drama, noir, horror. Got a lot going on in here. It says get out or die. Uh, Robert Culp and Samantha Egger. Uh, I, I enjoy Samantha Egger quite a bit. I've seen her in a couple other films. But uh, this film itself, so obviously this, this uh, company, Diamond Entertainment, really screwed up on the back here it says it's from 1970 it is from 1973 74 minutes is actually 78 minutes uh it's a full screen it was grainy so there is no other like better release of this from what i looked up online um it says it's a nail-biting terror-filled horror film not so much <laughs> I found it boring mostly, except for like the the scenes where it involved the actual house itself. Um, so they're going to the house because uh, Robert Culp's character's grand great grandfather passed away. Um, but they end up finding out that they're that the house is haunted by demons and ghosts, so tell them to get out. But they end up staying anyway, and they, they like warp. Robert Culp's mind and he the ending is really like weird too like I mean I I saw it coming I didn't I saw it coming so I wasn't really uh, surprised with that but there's a lot of sex scenes in this film too I guess in the early 70s you know I mean there was the you know still sex sells so you know it is what it is with that but uh yeah I don't really see myself watching this again so I'm going to be getting rid of this one so that is it, guys. That's 11 uh, movie reviews in a nutshell. Well, maybe 25 minutes is a little too long, but it is what it is. Let me know if you've seen any of these and what you thought of them, and I'll catch you guys probably in a day or two. I don't know yet. We'll see. So take care. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you guys later.